Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the technical forum at the group exhibit Hydrogen, Fuel Cells and Batteries here at the Hanover Fair in the year of 2015. Every 15 minutes, I invite you to have a seat and have some complimentary drinks on the house to enjoy interesting talks about the hydrogen industry. Today, I'm extremely excited to present to you your first topic, which is AVL THDA Low Cost Fuel Cell Monitoring. And for that, please welcome with me on stage Fuel Cell Manager of AVL List GmbH, Mr. Jürgen Rechberger. Hey, good morning. My name is Jürgen Rechberger. I'm working for AVL and responsible for global fuel cell uh, technology. I will talk today about a completely new approach uh, for fuel cell diagnosis and monitoring with special focus of uh, low cost uh, and dedicated to uh, in be introduced in fuel cell vehicles. Um, first, a few words only on AVL. So AVL is the worldwide largest in engin engineering supplier within the automotive industry. Uh, we do about 1.3 billion euros of, of turnover. Um, our main business is developing of any kind of uh, powertrains for the automotive industry. That means classical ones with combustion engines, uh, new and alternative one, hybrid, battery, and also fuel cell. Um, we have been in our past involved in the development of 1,500 engines. And uh, we also do the, the instrumentation and test solutions. So th that means test rigs, uh, engine testing, battery testing, e-machine testing, whatever is necessary. And for this, we have 4,000 test rig installations worldwide. Um, we have three business units. Uh, that's the um, power and engineering, uh, advanced stimulation technologies, and instrumentation and test systems. With these three business units, we address uh, the market. From the market side, we are in all markets active where powertrains are required. Obviously, most important for us is the passenger car segment, uh, commercial vehicle. We have this very strong activity in racing, uh, but most important is the passenger car side. Uh, to our fuel cell activity, uh, it has been started in 2002. We have around 50 people. Uh, and our main uh, focus on the fuel cell side is system integration for PEM and SOFC systems. That means we develop uh, competitive PEM and SFC products for our customers. Uh, we have a little bit of different business model than most of the companies here. We are not uh, doing hardware sales or hardware manufacturing. We are mainly an engineering supplier. So that means we support large OEMs in the development of competitive fuel cell products. And we do that for SFC as well as for PEM technology. Uh, now to the topic uh, for today, that's a new approach for fuel cell monitoring. Uh, fuel cell monitoring today is a quite expensive approach because the typical approach is that uh, they apply single cell voltage monitoring. So that means that in a big stack, up to 500 cells in, in cars, uh, they measure every single or a double cell the voltage to monitor it. Uh, that's a very expensive and very, uh, uh, let's say, a, a big effort to install that into product. And our approach here is uh, completely different. We basically only detect any kind of critical cell failure based on a complete stack voltage measurement. And uh, how this works is uh, that we basically, or I will explain it on this slide. So we basically exp uh, superimpose uh, a very well-defined signal containing of five to six frequencies to the current we draw from the fuel cell. And uh, based on a voltage measurement, we get all the information we need. So on the voltage, we may only measure the complete stack voltage, and we, uh, we transfer it via an FFT into the, into the frequency domain. And from this analysis, based in the frequency domain, we can detect any kind of critical status of one cell, and it works up to very, very big stacks. That's the basic principle. Uh, what we are looking for in the transfer function is not voltage drops we are basically looking for non-linearities in the transfer function. So that means any kind of critical status of one cell in a big stack will cause non-linearities in the transfer function between current and voltage. And this we can detect, and then we know we have a critical status in a cell. 
Um, that's the principle in, in the picture. So you see in the blue line shows an undisturbed normal cell operation. And if we imply now a sinus to the current, you also will see uh, the sinus on the voltage. Uh, but if we have now a disturbed cell, for example, the red line, if we apply the sinus on the current, we will get a totally disturbed answer on the voltage. And in the frequency domain, we see these distortions by over uh, harmonic, harmonics. And this f stuff we detect in the frequency domain. And if we detect this, we know that one cell in the big stack has a problem. Uh, this methodology is now transferred into a commercial laboratory instrumentation product. Uh, this is released now, actually, this year. Uh, it's called DHDA. It's Total Harmonic Distortion Analysis. Uh, this blue box is a, is a fully commercial product from AVL, from our test and instrumentation people. And they sell it with all guarantee warranty stuff involved as a commercial product. And uh, we will start, start shipping these devices in quarter three of this year. Uh, here are some examples for measurements. So here you see a typical measurement in an automotive stack, a very big uh, power output, one, uh, around 80 kilowatt. You see in the left-hand slide normal operation here with 450 amps, normal humidity. Uh, what we had done is that we reduced the humidity from 80% to 50%, and we immediately see uh, the dry-out signal from our analysis. So the, the system immediately detected that something going wrong, and in this case, it was the uh, low media, uh, sorry, the, uh, the dry out signal. In the last part of this test, the, uh, the OEM performed a, a rapid cool down. Uh, this is typically done to uh, force uh, liquid water. And also, here you see immediately the reaction from our DHD analysis that's the blue line. And the blue line indicates uh, liquid water. So, all these critical status are immediately detected by our DHDA device. Here's another test result. Um, here is a shift from the uh, air lambda from 165 to 134. And we also immediately see this in our detection and analysis signals. Another test, uh, just change of the dew point. Uh, so from 80% humidity to 120%. And we see this, the increased scatter point for liquid water. And this is another test, very small change only, from 90% humidity to 80% humidity. Uh, but you immediately can see this in our dry out signal. So a very small change in humidity can already be detected by our DHDA device. But that's really measured only on the complete stack voltage of a very, very big automotive stack. So here is some feedback from our customers. We are already using this technology with more or less every OEM in the world developing fuel cell vehicles. So we have a very good uh, repeatability. Uh, it's very sensitive to membrane drying, air stivation, and water droplets. Uh, easy setup, uh, good response time, very good resolution. Uh, the big advantage of this approach is how we can integrate this into fuel cell products. <laughs> because if we integrate this approach into products, it doesn't add any hardware costs to the product. Uh, because the big advantage is uh, the signal superimposition can, can be done uh, by the power electronics in a fuel cell product. For example, in a fuel cell vehicle, we have a DC-DC converter or we have a DC-AC converter, and this converter can do the superimposition of the signal. So this approach is basically then only software in the fuel cell system controller in a fuel cell vehicle and doesn't require any additional hardware. And that's probably one of the reasons the automotive industry is, is very interested in this approach, because they can put in a diagnosis, a real-time online diagnosis approach without any additional hardware costs. So short summary. So this DHDA is intended to monitor fuel cells in any kind of applications, uh, fuel cell vehicles, CHP, micro CHP, APUs. Uh, we can, this approach can detect all critical stack conditions in real time and online. Um, in the final product implementation, it doesn't require any additional hardware. So it's basically only software in the, in the control system. Um, I can skip this one. We will start selling uh, 
the commercial laboratory instrumentation uh, inst uh, product uh, in, in the end of this year. Uh, we are already working on an R&D effort to make this available for solid oxide fuels and also for PEM electrolyzers. And uh, we have this stuff already in use with seven car manufacturers uh, developing fuel cell vehicles. And it has been uh, tested already with a lot of other products, for example, with Japanese and farm products uh, based on PEM technology. OK, thank you very much. Thank you very much for this interesting presentation. Are there any questions from the audience? All right, then, thank you very much for your participation, and thank you very much, and uh, uh, see you uh, later. Thank you very much. <laughs>